day, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to our class, Revolutionizing Your Trading Using Blended Candlesticks. Now, understanding candlestick patterns goes far beyond just remembering and recognizing certain formations. Many books have been written about candlestick patterns, featuring hundreds of different formations. Well, if any of you have ever attended my class, the first thing I tell you is forget candlestick patterns. Reading a candlestick and understanding what it's trying to tell you in price action is more important than memorizing these patterns that people tell you, memorize this and when that happens, that happens, do this. I'm a price action trader and I believe that price on my charts is trying to tell me a story. And if I can understand what that story is, I can use that story to find entry points, exit points, and actually find high probability trades. Blending candlesticks helps improve that success rate. But in order to blend candlesticks, you do have to understand what the candlestick on your chart looks like and how to read it. Okay. Because truth be told, it will make no difference to your trading performance whether you know what the concealing baby shallow and the three black crows or unique three river bottoms are. What you need to understand is what the candlestick in front of you is trying to tell you about price, the trend strength, the buyer seller dynamics, and the likely path in the future. Now, I'm going to start you in the beginning only because a lot of people have forgotten this. They don't look at their candles, they look for patterns. Okay. And if you learn to focus your eye better, on what the candle is trying to tell you instead of what some pattern is trying to initiate and tell you to do, you'll find yourself more successful. So remember, there are four elements to each candlestick. That's it, four basic elements. And that's the open, the close, the high, and the low. So let's talk about these elements. First of all, there's always this war going on between the bulls and the bears. And understanding who is in charge, who is in control of the market at this point will help you understand what type of trade you might be looking for or disqualify other trades because you're not going to make a short trade when the bulls are in control. So, and it's all about context. It's relationships to the previous candle, two candles before, three candles before, and a new candle developing, where it is in relationship to the trend. And it's all about understanding the context of that, of price, and what it's trying to tell you, not memorizing strict patterns. So the size or the body of the candle is kind of important. Okay. We don't need to define whether it's two millimeters, four millimeters, 100 points, 300 points. There are small candles and medium candles and extremely long candles. Now we've seen these extremely long candles where something bizarre happens in the market and price falls really quickly. What we see a great deal of time are small body candles. Now we all know small body candles show you indecision because the bulls and the bears haven't been able to push one way or another. Medium body candles tell us that somebody is actually in control of the markets. But that's the body. The body, in fact, is the least important part. The most important part becomes the wicks or the shadows. Some people call them the tops and the tails. Others call them wicks or shadows. Doesn't matter what you call them. I call them wicks. Because the length of that wick tells you a lot and can define the upper price and the lower price. In other words, where you'd have to put your stop loss and where you would put your take profit. Okay. Larger wicks show that prices moved a lot during the duration of the candle, but it got rejected. When candle wicks become larger, it shows an increase in volatility. This often happens after long trending phases before a reversal happens or at a major support or resistance level. So a shadow on the top of the candlestick represents the sellers in control of the market. 
A shadow on the bottom of the candlestick represents the buyers in control of the market. So now let's start putting it together. Do you see longer wicks or bodies? In a high momentum trend, you can often see long bodies with small wicks. Why? Well, when the market's being pushed up and buyers and buyers and buyers are in there, most likely it's going to close towards the highest point it got. Not at the highest point. The bulls were able to push it up a little higher, but not hold on to that firm momentum. Close your eyes and just imagine a tug of war. Yeah, the guys on one side of the river, the girls on the other side, push, pulling back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Well, at exactly 1.15 when they yell lunchtime, well, that's the close of the candles, wherever it happened to be or whoever, where they happen to be at the moment, really doesn't tell you all that much. The open is where they started out the morning. Now, what does tell you something is maybe the guys were able to pull it way back in and got the first five girls wet in the, in the river, but the girls were able to muster their en energy and pull back a little bit, and one guy got pulled in, and then three more girls got pulled in, and the guys were able to pull back really far at some point, but they eased back up because they're all having fun and they're joshing. But you can see how strong the guys were and what their momentum was and in relationship to the clothes, but the clothes was other guys were laughing, they're having a good time, and they eased up for a second. But when uncertainty rises and volatility picks up and the bodies become smaller, while the wicks become larger, we have something. So say, for instance, we come back from lunch. The girls are all full of pep, and they got two more of the girlfriends on the other side. The guys had a few too many beers, and they're not so strong. They start pulling back. What happens? The girls yank really hard, pull the guys in the water. The guys get, yank, get, get stronger and yank the girls in the water. But by the end of the first 15 minutes, they both ended up on the same side of the banks. Okay. Volatility, small bodies. So this is an extension of the previous point. Can you see a long wick with a body on the opposite side? This is often showing rejection. When you have a small body in the middle of a candle with long wicks, it means indecision. So if you just close your eyes and imagine this tug of war, you can understand what is happening and what price is trying to tell you in that single time frame. So now the question comes to what's a blended candle? A blended candles must be candles running next to each other, but as many as you want. You always have to start out with some candle. It doesn't matter whether it's 10 candles ago, 14 candles. That candle is the first candle you're using to analyze the market. And you're going to use the open for that candle, whether it's 10 candles ago or two candles ago. The first candle in your grouping. Now, we don't want to go back 75 candles. Okay, We might... If we see a, a whole group of candles bunched together and want to interpret it, we might want to use three candles, five. But going back to 15 candles on a half hour chart means, you know, you're going back a pretty far time. But you have to decide what you're trying to analyze. Now, you would begin by using the open, the opening price of that first candle you used on the left hand side. You would then use the close, whatever the close is, of the most recent candle on the right side. You would then mark the lowest point in which the candle, the, the candles had reached in that trading period, the lowest of the wicks. And you would also mark the highest of the wicks. So, low, high, open, close. Okay. You're not, you are not thinking. You're not making any evaluation. You are drawing lines. Period. Then. Okay. There's no flexibility in this. You take the open of the first candlestick, the close of the last candlestick, the highest high of the, the overall grouping that you're looking at, and the lowest of that grouping you're looking at. And you end up with four lines on your 
little thing. And this is how you're drawing what I'm going to call the summarizing candle. Okay. When you put these together, you draw a line at the open that you'd extended, a line the close you extended. That forms your body. Draw a line across and put a dot for your wick and a dot for your wick for the hollow spine. And what you have is a new candle with an open, high, low, and close, what I'm calling a summarizing candle. Okay. It doesn't exist on any charts. You've made it up by doing this grouping, this blending. Okay. Now, again, I am anti-patterns. So even though all these tell you you're looking at piercing patterns and it's now creating a hammer, forget all that. Okay. Don't spend all the time. You're going to look and see what did you get. Your new summarizing candle that you drew is now telling you the story of the markets from that first candlestick to your left to where the market sits now. So what does this candle tell you when you look at it? it shows you some indecision in the markets. The bears tried to muster a whole bunch of energy but couldn't hold on to it, got rejected. But they closed a little bit lower than the open. So it tells you the bears have a minute bit of control, but they're not dominating. So would I want to make a trade during this period? I doubt it. Okay, because I don't have anybody in control of the markets and I have a lot of volatility with the very long wicks. But when I have them together and I blended the two or more candles, okay, I now have, and decide I want to make a trade, I now have my stop loss point because if I'm going long, I would use the stop loss at the lowest point of that candle. I would use my take profit at the highest point or the highest wick of that candle. Then you'd have to figure out where you'd want to enter that trade and use that for your risk management. So we can blend different can adjacent candles to form a single candlestick, thus summarizing the outcome over several periods into one candle or one, again, what I'm calling the summarizing candle. We can blend candles in similar frequency over any time scale. This will work whether you're using a 15 minute chart, a one hour chart, a two hour chart, a half hour chart, a five minute chart. We can blend as many adjacent candles as we see fit. And in fact, by doing this, one gets a clearer insight into the evolution of the market activity over a longer period of time. So first, all the blended candles can create a single stronger signal. Secondly, by blending candles, one minimizes market noise. Thirdly, we can blend certain candles to see patterns, which may not have normally been visible. And finally, by continuing watching individual candles play out over time periods, creates stress. And frequency does result in premature stopping out or exiting points. By using blended candles, you reduce your stress in the markets. You know, your, your emotional stress it doesn't change the market, but if you know you're going to get a clearer signal with a blending candle, you don't have to sit there and watch every candlestick that's appearing on your chart to panic and freak out and close your market. So the importance of the last point cannot be understated. The psychological aspect reacting to short-term patterns plagues most investors. So keep in mind, forget the patterns. Look at the combination of candles. Try it. Try combining three, four, five, six candles. Because it doesn't matter if there's reds and greens. It doesn't matter how many are in between. Open to the first candle, close to the last candle, highest wick, lowest wick, gives you the new candle. That will summarize what that market is telling you over those periods of time. So keep that in mind. Add it to your trading along with some trend analysis some support and resistance, and you might have yourself an easy to do successful trading strategy. So thank you very much for joining us and have a great trading day.